<clears throat> supposed to be live right now. Oh, there we go. Supposed to be live. <clears throat> All right, shalom, everybody. Finally up and running. Out everybody for joining. All right, Shalom. All praise to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. As I was saying, the water everybody for joining. Kind of jumped the gun a little bit. All right, back with another live stream. This one, Lord will be edifying. And it's entitled Hebrew Israelites. What's wrong with Christianity? All right, just like the title sounds, Hebrew Israelites, what's wrong with Christianity? So this is dealing with a, a question off the comment board, and you got this individual that's a that's a new person. And this is geared towards some of you know the new Israelites, of course, but also too for us that's in the know, it should serve as an eye opener even more. Now, when we wake up to the truth as Israelites, we have all kinds of questions and stuff, right? So that's just like this. But now in the process of this, I may get a little, you know, I may <laughs> talk a little bit of trash. But in all actuality, it's in the spirit of edification. All right? It's not really meant it's not meant to hurt the individual. But in my mind, I'm like, why do you not know this? Why do you not know what's wrong with Christianity? But you'll see from the comment. So with no further ado, let's get right into it. Um, I'm going to start off with the scripture. Let's get Revelation 11. All right, we'll start at verse 8, and then we'll go right to the comment. Let's just read this to open up with Revelation 11 and verse 8. It says, <clears throat> Salakia, Revelation 11 and verse 8, it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, while also our Lord was crucified. This is speaking of the Hebrew Israelites being spiritually dead, Spiritually dead individuals, not knowing their heritage, not knowing who they are, where they come from. Let's go real quick. Let's see here. Uh, congregation, congregation. My fan. It's a little hot in here. My fan don't want to stay on, but Lord willing, I work it out. This is Proverbs twenty-one, verse sixteen. Now listen close. It says, "The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding." shall remain in the congregation of the dead it didn't say he's going to go to the congregation of the dead it said you're going to remain in it so we were all at one point spiritually dead israelites we didn't know we was israelite we thought we was everything else other than israelites that's the, the connotation of the dead in revelation 11. let's go back to it let's read this one more time Proverbs 21 16 the man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead so when you read in Ezekiel 37 it talks about the valley of dry bones which is the spiritually dead Israelites the great awakening is when the Israelites wake up what do we what do we wake up from the long sleep or dead meaning our heritage was taken from us we didn't know who we were let's read it again Revelation 11 and 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt. And when it says our dead bodies are lying in the street, it just means we're everywhere. We're living in a place. We didn't know our heritage. We didn't know who we were. And the place is spiritually Sodom and spiritually Egypt. Why is it called that? You know the reason why with Sodom, right, is every form of wickedness, dirty acts, you know, nasty. I mean, I don't even want to really get into it, but you understand that. In Egypt, because what? It's a place of spiritual, it's a place of bondage, just as Egypt was. Is this not a place of bondage for us? <coughs> Excuse me. So much pollen and stuff. All right. And it says, well, also our Lord was crucified. Now, we we bring this out. This is a spiritual thing. Carnal individuals are not going to get this. So when it says the Lord was crucified, meaning he was crossed out, his image, who he really was, you know, and all of that is crossed out. <clears throat> That's the crucifixion here. 
And you got to be a spiritual individual to understand this. The Lord has to give you that through the spirit. If you can't get it, then you just can't get it. <coughs> and the reason I'm coughing now is it's, it's definitely because of the pollen. So I got, I, and you know, I was going to get this other scripture, but I see a brother put it up. Let's read it here. This is GMS in his likeness, Jeremiah 17 and 4. It means what it says. It says, and thou... Even thyself, talk about the Israelites, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire, and mine anger which shall burn forever. So did we go into captivity? Yes. Did the Israelites go into captivity? It's in the Bible. Yes. Okay. Did they discontinue from their heritage? Yes. This is the purpose that they need to wake up because they discontinue from their heritage. All right, so there will be it's, it's prophesied you'll be in a land not knowing who you were, but you will wake up, you will have an awakening, you will be in a land spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. And the Christians argue against this, they try to come with all kinds of excuses, they try to go, you know, use other versions of the Bible, they say all this different stuff, but it's not for them. And when I say Christians, I'm talking about Edomite Christians and even so called black Christians, you numb nuts, you hammerhead. You brain dead, spiritually dead, backwards, slave gelding black Christians argue against the Hebrew Israelites because you're not you're not of the chosen. You're of the chosen people, but you're not of the elect. That's why you argue against it. Now, in verse nine, here it says, and, and, the, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And this is meaning what <clears throat> the nations for a period of time would see us. Some knew, knew that we were the Israelites and they didn't tell us who we were. That will make us that will put us in rest. Meaning what it's an it's a, uh, allegory for graves. They would have spiritually put us to rest by telling us who we were, but they didn't. Right now, in verse 10, it says they shall and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And when they made merry and rejoiced over us and sent gifts, well, when they sent gifts one to another, we were the gifts being sent back and forth in slavery all over the earth. You know, it was very customary for Edomites or other nations to say, I got a, a slave. I'm going to send you a slave as a gift. This, that, and the other. You want to look into it? Do your own research and look into it. If you don't believe what we're saying. Now, when it says they make merry, the nations were happy. They were happy that we was in slavery. When we go, when you go back in the history, the Israelites put complete hell on these different nations because we ruled over them. Now, in verse 11, the great awakening, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. That's the Holy Spirit, the awakening coming into the Israelites. And it says, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So, this is currently where we are now. We're on our feet. We were risen from our long sleep, right? The long, the dead, the dead sleep that we were in. We didn't know who we were, but now we were we were awakened. Not on a, not on the uh, the biggest scale that is going to come right now. It's, it's it's steadily increasing all of the time. And I see the brothers with all the great scriptures. Then we're going to have to get to them. But let's get to this guy's comment first, and then we'll get you know we'll get more into it. So we the great awakening is upon us. However. Not the, the the gigantic mass awakening that we believe is gonna come. Okay, but we'll we'll see. I mean, some brothers do believe that the that the elect is already gathered and that the Lord could come anytime. Um, I'm of the opinion I believe that, but at the same time, we still preaching the gospel, so therefore I believe there's still elect out there. All right, but we you know, but it remains to be seen. None of us know for sure. Now let's get to this individual's comment. <clears throat> and before we do that, let's read this brother's scripture. This is uh Let's see. Do I want to start right there? Just bear with me here. Um, let's read a few of these. This is Pillars of Benjamin, Baruch four thirty seven. It says, "Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the Most High." That's the Israelites being gathered by the word. And you know what? I actually left. I should have started here in verse thirty six. It says, "O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east." And behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the Most High. 
Lo, thy sons come whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the Most High. All right. And that's us, you know, uh, the word is gathering the Israelites right now. That's what's happening. It's in prophecy. Now, I'm going to slow it down a little bit. And we're going to go read this individual's comment. I'm going to give you a bunch of reasons. I'm going to throw a lot at you in a little bit of time. But we're going to read scriptures. So you just 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 buckle in. And I want to make it easily understandable. I mean, we understand it because we've been in the truth. But we have to remember that a lot of these Israelites, they so new, gullible. They don't know what's going on. They're so scared easily fooled easily tricked so let's just you know let's let's, let's remember that because <laughs> i want to talk a lot of shit but at the same time i'm like okay you know let's just see where we go with it so this is a comment from uh there was a video called uh, a, a short portion of video i clipped out of the camp from last week when these two jays came up smoking cigarettes and the video is entitled and the rest were blinded so this person on the comment board botex eight six three one listen listen to this and i hope y'all can see it he says hey can someone give me a verse where it says i mean i think he meant to say that so can someone give me a verse where it says the christianity is bad or whatever i'm really lost about this so he doesn't understand that christianity is a damn false religion now listen further he says i believe in yahweh and yahweh shy and Rakah Kodash, which means Holy Spirit. The word Rakah, Spirit, Kodash, is holy. He says he believes in Yahweh and Yahweh Shah and the Rakah Kodash. I've been born an Eastern Orthodox. It's just crazy to me that I've been lied to this whole time. And he put up the standard APTTMH. Now, in this video, after them Jays walked off, we went into the reason why. The Savior's name is not, you know, it couldn't be Jesus. We went into the whole thing with us being scattered and we worshiping false gods and idols. We were very careful, you know, in, in how we said it. And this Jay, it just completely went over his head. You see, he just completely went over his head. So I got I got a little bit irritated at the at the end of the question. And I said, you must not have been listening to the video. Just watch the videos and take notes because Jake wants you to go back. Now, he said he be, if he believes in Yahweh, he believes in Yahweh Shai and and the holy spirit right so obviously he believes he's an israelite but yet he's holding on to he doesn't get it why christianity is bad good lord man he came back he said shalom ak and when you new people when you say a a a k h or a h k you spe you spelling that based off of, of uh egyptology okay it's a h c h or you can just say brother he says, we'll listen to it again and try to understand better, okay? Now, he came back later on and told me that he was understanding a little bit better some other stuff, and he was thanking me doing all of this. But there's other people that also ask questions like this. What's wrong with Chris? See, Jake don't understand it. Let's, so let me, just, let me just give you some reasons. Number one, Christianity, the, what you talk about today, that form of Christianity, that's a white man religion. When our people lost their heritage and we came over here in slavery, we were scattered all over the place. When we came over here, this form of worship that you do in the Christian churches, the name Jesus that you call on, the way your ass wears suit and tie, that hooping and hollering you do, that slaying of the spirit, that falling out, that passing out, that foaming at the damn mouth, doing all that. You learned that shit in slavery and you've been doing that ever since. That's not part of what the Bible tells you to do. And let me let me let me try to you know say it exactly what I want to say. So Christianity is a false religion. The Bible is not a Christian book, it's a book of the Israelites. The term Christian was placed upon the Israelites, those that followed the Savior, as a mocking term. It's as when the Romans were saying those Christians, really, the word is Mashiachim, because the Savior's name is not Christ. His name is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So followers of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach were called Mashiachim. That's what it's called. Mashiach is single. Mashiachim is plural. That's who they who they are. The, the uh, Romans made up a term, you know, he branded them Christians or whatever to mock who they were. Later on, the so-called white man took a religion and he, he took the Bible and he based it loosely upon the bible we say loosely why do we say loosely because 
when you get into Christianity and what people actually believe, all of them, them different churches that come forth from the Christian, from the Roman Catholic Church, from the Roman Catholics to Baptists to Mormons to Seven Day Adventists to Jehovah's Witness, all of them are different branches of Christianity. They all believe in the same white Jesus, which is false. They all believe in uh, uh what's the word, uh, super suppressionism, which is replacement theology. They want to replace the Israelites. They teach the fake ass speaking in tongues. They all celebrate Christmas, right? Except for the Jehovah's Witnesses. Let me let me leave them out. For the most part, Christianity sponsors Christian uh, Christmas, which is a false pagan holiday, which is mixed. It's a mixture of paganism. And they take some things from the Bible and from other pagan festivals. They made it this one big thing and it's commercialized as Christmas. I mean, shall we go on? Thanksgiving, birthdays, fucking fake ass speaking in tongues. Oh, uh, hell. All these are fake, false doctrines filtered through some type of way to try to filter through the Bible. But they're false doctrines. Halloween. And they may say they don't celebrate Halloween. They'll say that the Trinity doctrine and when we say the fake speaking in tongues, the slain in the spirit, that all these different things, this is what's wrong with Christianity. It's a fake ass religion. They use the Bible and they read certain things out of it, but they've, they've taken the understanding of it, which they never had to understand it because they're not the Lord's people. So what they've done is they've made a fake religion. The rapture doctrine, that's another one. All kind of stuff, catching the spirit, slain in the spirit. Easter. There's no, there's no holiday the, the Israelites ever celebrated, known as no damn Easter. And they left out uh, Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, all the, 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 the real holidays in the scripture. They left all that out. Then they also took it and made it into a universal book for everybody. When in fact, it's a, it's a book for the Israelites. They managed to do this while we were asleep. Right. The Lord took our heritage from us. They replaced us with the fake, the fake Jews in Israel. Right. They, they whitewashed all the whole Bible. Here it is, Jake. You don't woke up to the truth and you asking us what's wrong with Christianity. Can we give you a no? We can't, you know, fucking verse that says Christianity is bad. You should know better. You should know better. You've been asleep all this time. You finally woke up. Here you are. What's wrong, brother? Can you give me a no? We can't give you no verse. The Holy Spirit got to give it to you, man. You can't see that. Why do we need to wake up if we if it was our book and we had it all along? Why do we need to wake up? Woman pastors, that's another one. Woman preachers. People are equal. All people are the same. Everybody can be saved by the Lord. That, all that's false. Christianity in itself is almost 100% lies. Almost 100% lies. Damn near every doctrine that they teach is false. And we proven it. That's why the world got a problem with it. So we were supposed to come in these last days, right? And we were supposed to straighten all this out with the teaching for those that the Lord is going to save. The whole world is not going to agree with us, man. OK, that's just the bottom line. So you have to eat pork, eat whatever you want, eating unclean things. The law's done away with. Right. All kind of stuff. Uh, legal separations in marriages. Such thing as divorce. Women can, you know, get legally separated, be with other men. It's just all kinds of stuff. And the whole world is polluted based upon this punk ass Christianity, man. All right. <clears throat> Look at this person. Hurt. It's better to be a child rapist than, than to be a Christian. Okay, man. Go away, man. Yeah. Yeah. They, they also, that's that's another thing. That Antichrist doctrine, right? The virgin birth. On and on. White angels. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Just all, on and on. The, the further you go, the more things you can name. And every brother can name 20, 100 things. You know, 20 to 100 things. The Old Testament done away with the New Testament. Just all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. We, and you know, uh, what do they say? There's no dietary law. The law they say the law was done away with is things on and on and on and on. Okay, come as you are. <laughs> so much crap. Did, did the brothers get rid of that guy? Let's see. Hold on, brothers. I mean, I know I see he he probably was trying to say something good, but some shit you just don't need to say, man. Damn. And you getting for that, you earned a block. It's better to be a child rivers. Hey, be quiet, man. Be quiet. You don't got nothing to say. Just listen in the background. All right. Now let's 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 read some scriptures. Let's go back and read his comment. Just wanted to mention that. But you, if you need to, I mean, really, man, it's like you got at some point. But see, this this shows you that Christianity had had a negative effect on our people. Gospel music is is also false because guess what? It's built upon the false worship of Jesus. That name Jesus is false. And whenever you bring it up with Christians, 
let me ask you something. And y'all know this, but I'm gonna put it on, I'm putting it on wax for the Christian people that's gonna watch. And you keep trying to avoid this, but you can't avoid it. We asking you now, we telling you, we, we telling our brothers and sisters. The Savior's name is not Jesus, but you keep saying it. You keep going by that. You got Israelites that wake up and they still call on Christ. The Savior was an Israelite. He was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. He spoke he he spoke Paleo Hebrew. There was no J's around back during the time when he was on the earth. How could his name have been Jesus? The letter J didn't even what is it even invented? Furthermore, they didn't even speak English. You keep talking about Jesus because it's written in that book, in the Bible. But his name is not Jesus, and we've told you that. Let's get a quick scripture. I want to I want to bring this point home. And see, the Christians leave out the fact that the Israelites were scattered. They try to replace us with the people in the Holy Land, calling them the Jews, and they're not even Jews. They're not, they're not the people of the Lord. It's nowhere in the Bible where the nations were going to come and help the Israelites and send them money and aid, and they're going to go back to the Holy Land. We told y'all that. We proved everything that we've been saying. There's no way in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible, and there's no way in hell that the Israelites are going to go back to the Holy Land during the first earth age, during the rule of, of uh, the Roman Empire, Esau, Edom, and, and, and neither is it in there that the Romans are going to help the Israelites go home, send them aid. The nations around the world are going to contribute and help the Israelites. That's not in the Bible. It's nowhere in there. And we've told you this. We've taught it. But what did you do? You tried to brand us some type of hypocrite, some type of uh, uh, false prophets and all of this stuff because you've been caught. You've been lying, bitches. But that's all right. It's all coming out. It's all coming out. So this is Deuteronomy 28, 64. They even deny that the Israelites, well, they'll tell you the Israelites were scattered, but then they'll tell you that they went back to the Holy Land, which that's skipping over prophecies, man. Deuteronomy 28, 64. The, the Israelites are not supposed to even go back to the Holy Land and be there as a people until the Savior comes and takes them back. Until after Armageddon, until after Babylon the Great is destroyed. All these things are clearly written in the Bible and we bring it out, but you keep you keep trying to avoid it. You ain't going to be able to avoid it. You caught. Deuteronomy 28, 64. Listen to this. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Did the Israelites get scattered among all people? The answer is yes. How can we prove? Well, Jesus never talked about a scattering. Let's go to Luke. Luke 21. It's right here in the Bible. Luke 21, verse 24. This is what it says. We'll start at 21. Start at 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Did Jerusalem get surrounded by armies? It did. 70 AD, Yahweh was prophesying on it. And a lot of Israelites died, but many others left on their own. They, they fled, and, and many got rounded up and sold into slavery. It says, and let them that are in the countries uh, let them not let not them that are in the countries enter therein too, for these be the days of vengeance that all things which were written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. What people? The Israelites, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. What? Yeah, in all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, the other nations. They're going to come into the land. They're going to trot all over it. They're going to do all kind of stuff. And how long is that going to be until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled? Now, when is the time of the Gentiles fulfilled? That is at the end. If we go real quick to Daniel, let's go to Daniel. And even the scholars know this. The so-called scholars of this world, they know this because how could they then put it in, in, in the blue letter like this? And it chronicalizes these different kingdoms and that image that, that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar saw in a dream, it laid it out. In the first kingdom, the interpretation of Babylon, the first kingdom right here. Second kingdom was Medo-Persia. And then the Medo-Persians rose up. I mean, the Greeks rose up and took them down and they came into power. That's the third one. And then Rome came into power. And Rome was in power during the time where the Lord was on the scene. Paul, the disciples, 
right? The Romans is the one crucified the Lord. Now, the Roman Empire was going to come in two waves. The first wave was during the time when the Lord then was on the scene, but then it went out of power during the uh, Dark Ages, and it came back into power around, what, 1400s? And, I'm, and my dates might not be exact, but it, the second wave came back into power, and you had what's known as the Renaissance, is the rebirth, was the rebirth of the Roman Empire, and this is the same people still in authority, and that empire will keep on ruling until the divine kingdom. Now, the, the curious thing is, the Israelites don't go home until the divine kingdom comes. So if you people saying that the Israelites went home during the Roman Empire, you are a bunch of damn liars. And you are saying it, and you are liars. Now, Daniel 2, 44 states, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. So when the Israelites go home, they're going to be in a kingdom that's going to never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms do you see that going on the answer is no and it shall stand forever you see that and then it goes into that stone coming which is your shy doing he hey he was gonna come and set up the kingdom of heaven on the earth and that's when you know the israelites are back home if we read revelation 11 and it matches what's in the new testament because they dance together hand in hand revelation 11 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his anointed, and he shall reign forever and ever. See, so when the Lord comes, the kingdom of heaven is going to be set up, and he's going to be ruling on the throne. Revelation 21, is it 21? <clears throat> yeah, Revelation 21 and 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more See, This new heaven and new earth, this is the kingdom of heaven on the earth. And this is when the Savior comes. He's going to establish the new heaven and the new earth, the kingdom of heaven on, on the planet earth. Verse 2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is speaking of the people of the Lord having been beamed up, taken up into the chariots at the second coming of the Lord, saved, changed into new bodies, immortal beings coming back, with our Lord and Savior to establish the kingdom of heaven on the earth and Jerusalem is going to be the ruling place. So before the Israelites go home, all those things got to happen. So this is part of what's wrong with Christianity. Now, going back to Deuteronomy 28, 64, it says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there in captivity, thou shalt serve other gods, other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And we brought this out in the video, and we explained it. So all you different Israelites that call known Jesus and Christ, the passion of the Christ, you going off. The scripture said when we got scattered in all nations, we're going to worship other gods of wood and stone that our fathers never knew. And the main one of them, his name was, these white people told you his name was Jesus. How the hell can you, in all good conscience as an Israelite, walk around the earth, Proclaiming you talking about you follow Jesus, you follow the Christ. You got it in your title, Israel United in Christ, gathering of Christ Church, ambassadors of Christ, right? Do they not? And they keep saying it. Warriors of warriors for Christ. It's different stuff. You weirdos, man. This is what's wrong with Christianity because look, how can his name be Jesus of Christ? We been if you was a, if you was a, asleep as an Israelite. <laughs> You've been calling the name since you was a kid. So you mean to tell me now you're going to wake up as an Israelite and you're going to go back to calling the names that your father never knew while you've been in captivity before you knew you was an Israelite? That don't even make sense. And to the individual that asked the question, how do you not understand this? How do you not understand what's wrong with Christianity? If you've been really, it really, you must not even really been a, a good Christian. You must have been not been in the church and seen all the shit they do in there. Cause I went to church and I seen all of it. Easter speeches, slain in the spirit, eating all kind of unclean food. They were doing a lot of weird, freaky things. They do a bunch of singing songs, very little teaching, very little Bible. I mean, real teaching. Like we understand now, they have very little teaching. You didn't know nothing about Passover. You never heard about the 12 tribes. You didn't know nothing about this, who the Savior truly was. Who his father is, they didn't lie about all of that. They told you that Satan was, was against the Lord, like he was powerful or something, you know, which he is a powerful being, but they made it seem like he was equal to the Lord, and, and he gonna he they in a war. 
They didn't tell you that the, the Satan worked for the Most High. <laughs> that the Most High was his daddy. <laughs> and then he read him. He told him what to do. That the Heavenly Father was in charge of evil as well as good. And that he only loved the Israelites. They never told you that. Christianity left so much out. But that's because their religion is false. And now they're trying to, they're trying to come back. See, they learn from watching us. The way we bring the precepts out, where we break things down, and they stole from us. They try to come back against us with what we teach and try to use it on us. Wait a minute. I know y'all seen the movie Thor. You can't use Thor's hammer on him. It won't work. You can't use this shit on us, man. You can't do nothing against this truth because you people are caught. Even speaking in tongues is false. The way they did a hobo, bo, coco, show, 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 rotunda. What the fuck are you talking about? That ain't speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is languages. <laughs> Let's go there. Let's prove it. Let's just prove it. Let's give you one. A freebie. This is Acts 5. And really it's going into the Israelites. Right? Hearing their, hearing the word being spoken. And those Israelites were scattered among different nations. Is it, is it Acts 5? Just bear with me, brothers. No, it's Acts 2. My fault. Acts 2. The whole mystery of speaking in tongues has been misrepresented by the Christ, all the Christians. And why nobody ever brought, brought it out and said it was all lying? If Jehovah's Witnesses were truly against all the Christian churches, they would have broke that down. If the seven-day Adventists really was against the rest of the Christians, they would have broke that down. They would have told you the true color of the Lord, the Heavenly Father, and His Son, the Israelites. They ain't none of them told you the truth. Acts 2 and 1, the day of Pentecost. Now, they'll tell you, I don't know what... Really, I don't even remember what they used to say about it because it's been so long ago, but we're going to give you the right understanding. Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, this is probably about around about a point where they start telling you, you know, what the Lord is. And, and, and why is it always the same thing? They say that don't nobody know what you're saying. Well, why can I repeat what they say? They say, hobo, bo, coco, show, rotunda, rosi. There's different words. And it's always the same dumb phrase. That's not speaking in tongue. That's babbling. This babbling. It goes on. It says, now it says right here, this, they began to speak with other tongues. As you read down, it's going to tell you the reason why they were speaking with other tongues. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. They'll read this and act like it ain't saying what it's saying. This is talking about all these different people that were there. They were Israelites that had been scattered, that had been living among the other nations. And they have been calling themselves after other nations. You, and they're going to name them. So all these people were Hebrew Israelites. But they had been dwelling among the other nations. Living as if they were from those nations. But they came back to Jerusalem for one of the feasts. And then they spoke different languages. So when the disciples, the apostles was teaching. They couldn't understand the language. So the, the great miracle was. Well, we're going to read it. They were able to hear the gospel being taught in their own language. Where they were scattered. It got nothing to do with Hobo Bo, Coco Show, Rotunda, Rose C. Like the brothers in Bahamas say, kill a mosquito, start up a Honda. <laughs> it had nothing to do with that. Verse 6 says, Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Language from the earth. Languages from the earth. See, they try to get over. They tell you this is a language of the heavens. Nobody understand what is. Yeah, okay. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Wait a minute. Ain't these dudes from Galilee? Don't they speak Hebrew? Why can I understand what they're saying in Arabic? Why can I understand what they're saying in Asian languages? How can I understand what they're saying when I'm from Libya? And I speak a completely different language than them. How can I understand it? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? It's going to name them. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia have Asian looking Israelites. 
all these different nations, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues, languages, the work, the wonderful works, excuse me, the wonderful works of the most high. So wait a minute. Two things. It told you back here in verse five, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So obviously these all people are all Israelites from the other nations. And if they're Israelites from the other nations, why don't y'all teach about that? You made a mockery of the Lord's word and, and, and look bugged out in doing it. Speaking in tongues had nothing to do with the big way these people babbling. Not I heard people do. We, it, was, uh, it was a white chick that rolled up on us, me and brother Yuan some years back. <laughs> and this bitch basically was saying, I said, I said, what you say? Say it again. You speaking in tongues? Say it again. She wouldn't do it. When you, if, if the way they describe speaking in tongues, it's, in, it's uncontrollable, something that comes over them. So then how can, how then can you just do it at the drop of a hat then? If that's what it's supposed to be, it's really not. It's really not. They're not speaking in tongues. And that's just one of the many examples. When you go back to the, the story of Genesis and all of that, Christianity has completely, completely screwed up all of that. They got you thinking that a woman was talking to a, a, a literal snake was talking to a woman and convinced her, you know, to eat an apple, to bite an apple. Then she got her husband to bite the apple. <laughs> and because they, they bit this special apple off this special tree that meant all humanity was doomed and cursed <laughs> over an apple that the lord made he made it said in the scripture that he made food for man that you could eat anything you want to eat just don't this one tree is special we got golden apples don't bite them <laughs> it's stupid but this is what's wrong with christianity we have to say it like this how stupid can you be you literally believe that people die and their body go on the ground, and their spirit go to a place where they burn. Now, spirit is energy, right? You gonna go to a place on the ground. You are gonna burn for all eternity with this fire, which your spirit can't burn because it's already energy. And then you are gonna have worms crawl on you, but you can feel the worms biting your spirit, which the spirit does not flesh. But the worms crawling on you, but the fire don't burn up the worms, but it burning you. Oh. that's why they made that emoji because that's how dumb this stuff is. But Without teachers, you're going to still be a part of that. That's right, brothers. Going off, going off. Put you to sleep. Never break down the mark of the beast. Right? They never tell you They never tell you that America going to be destroyed. Good Lord. You heard any Christians that say, and you're supposed to be the even if you, Even if you were really the people of the Lord, would you not rebuke America for all the wickedness that it's done? You never hear them get on these. And now you have isolated incidents where it'd be a christian church the pastor start talking about all the wickedness and homosexuality sure but eventually he'll go away he'll go away they'll calm him down offer him some money so you don't even know about the 501c3 and the inner workings of christianity the masonic principles and all these different things that every preacher in a christian church is a 501c3 for the most part and they all get money from the government so they don't have to pay taxes all of them work for the government all of them do there's not one Christian, and I challenge any person that watched this video, if you say you know a Christian preacher that's teaching the full truth of the Bible, furnish his name, furnish his link to his page, and we will examine it. And I challenge you, I'm, I'm telling you, he's not teaching you the truth. They ain't teaching you the truth. The Lord sent the prophets in the last days to teach you the truth of the Bible, but it's only for the Israelites. And more importantly, it's only for the elect of the Israelites. Ain't nobody on the earth teaching the truth other than Hebrew Israelites and more importantly, those that are the men of the Lord. That's it. The rest of these people, they're all teaching lies. I don't give a damn how mad you get. If you show me, if you tell me your preacher preached the truth, I challenge you to give me his link to a day page or channel or who, what church they own because everybody got a website and I will show you personally. I will make a video with your preacher that you say teaching the truth and we will go through his videos and we will show you where his errors are. Every damn one of them, but you ain't gonna never do it because you don't want this. You don't want to come and get none of this work. You can talk all that and say whatever you want to say about us. We got the truth, and you mad that you don't have it. So let's get some more scriptures here. So that was the example in Acts, right? Let's go back to um, let's read Deuteronomy again. No Israelite, no none of the white preachers ever told you that the Israelites were under the curses. Why not? We had to come do it. <clears throat> 
If they truly was teaching the truth and they cared about the Bible so much, they would have told you you were the Israelites. They would have told you the so-called white man is Esau. They would have told you they would have gave you the identity of the other nation. They got that wrong. They're completely wrong going off. And a lot of y'all like to be still talking about, oh, white man, he can make, he can be saved. You just close your mouth. You don't know what you talk about. You don't even understand the way the Lord created things. He didn't make no two nations alike, and he didn't make any other nation like the Israelites. And he damn sure didn't make no Edomites to save them. That ain't why they was put here. They, wasn't, they wasn't even put here to be saved. And before you even begin to understand that, you got to understand the basics from the Bible, and you can't even get it. Here's, well, let's give you another one. GMS version Island Straight Gate. Most of you, when you read this, your brain will start to come out of your damn earlobe if you got your ears pierced because you can't comprehend it. Listen to this. Acts 7 48. How be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as said the prophet. What that mean, brother? I mean, that mean when you go to the, the to the sun worship temple on Sunday or Saturn day, the most high spirit is not there. He's not in the temple made with hands. He's not there waiting for you to bow down to kiss it. Nothing. Baptism is alive. They taught you that 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 cleans all your all your sins. How can water, which is literal, cleanse sin, which is spiritual? And it, it, I mean, how? How? That's almost as ridiculous as fire burning the soul. It's really pointless. It's baseless. They just getting your money. And you learned all of that. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you learned all that all these many years. All you really learned was a bunch of tenants from men cleverly crafted to take your money and to keep you dumbed down. And do you know that in slavery, what was they doing? They, they, they set up a nigger preacher to preach to the slaves. And they made him preach the doctrine that they told him to preach. And they sent around overseers to make sure or other other men to make sure that he was teaching what they told him to teach. And it went on that way. It just kept spreading and spreading and spreading all that slanting the spirit falling down and big ass hats. You can't if you go into the scriptures, you can't find the Bible anywhere where a woman put on a big ass hat and wore, wore it to the service. You can't find that nowhere. You can't find women, women preachers in the Bible. You can't find Monday. You can't find Sunday. They got the Sabbath wrong. They never told you about the Sabbath. They say Sunday is the Lord's day. Find it in the scriptures. Find it in the scriptures. Then they'll say, well, the seven days, the Lord's day, we do it on Sunday. The word Sunday ain't in the Bible. The word Saturday is not in the Bible. We're not under this. We're not under this uh, 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 This whole uh, calendar. We weren't under this calendar back then. Right? Communion, eating a, gra eating a wafer, and drinking grape juice ain't in the Bible. It's just not there. You can't find that. These are all tenets of men crafted to to deceive you and you fell for the shit but then when you woke up to the truth as an israelite you should have known that why you woke up to the truth and you asking to show us one scripture where it say christianity is bad all of them say it <laughs> good lord man you basically still sleep and brothers are telling you the word rapture is not in the bible right um <clears throat> hey you hardly see a Christian pastor with a beard. You'll see him more now with beards because a beard is a fashion statement and it looked manly and women like it, right? So you see them wearing a beard as a fashion trend, but not because the Lord said do it. They tell you, well, I wear my beard, but you don't have to do it. You know, that's stupid. Them white gloves and white shoes and white dresses. The first Sunday of every month, everybody wear all white. <laughs> we drink the grape juice in the wafer. That's all a bunch of BS. All of it. The real communion is the eating the flesh and the drinking the blood is understanding of the scriptures. That was an allegory is what it meant. Jake's still on the comment board. Can you tell us about the Lord's Supper, brother? We're supposed to keep Lord's Supper, right? Come on, man. The Lord's Supper is Passover. You ain't even kept that. So we read this. Is Deuteronomy 28, 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. We got scattered from one end of the earth even until the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Is that not plain? In captivity, you're going to worship other gods. And God was another God. Jesus was another God. Buddha was another God. Allah was another God. Shiva was another God. Hip-hop was another God. All of these things, every religion you was a part of before you woke up to the truth, every name of every God you called on was false. Ain't nobody in here on the comment board right now called on Yahweh and Yahweh Shai when you was living in the world before you knew you was an Israelite. So why would you go backwards and call on the names of the gods now from the front that you was called on before? And these white people through 
when you tell them the Savior's name not Jesus, yeah, well, it's in the Bible, right in the Bible, Jesus, because that comes with a, a certain, well, I'm white. I can't be wrong. You can't tell me no because I'm white. You ain't even white. You red. And all they can do is, only thing they can do, when you tell them all the truth in the Bible, they, you a racist. That's the first thing they're going to say. That's about as worn out and played out as you anti-Semitic. It's the same damn thing. Same defense mechanism is a button you press to try to get off. And we're just looking at you like you're stupid now. We don't even get mad at you call us these names because we know you have no recourse other than to bow down and understand that we got the truth. You can't do nothing to us. We are a defense brazen wall. We have a defense brazen wall again. You can't do nothing to us. You can't. If you take down videos, it's not going to matter. We already told everybody everything. We, that's all we really want to do is just tell it. We ain't trying to get nobody to follow us, send us no money, be with us, come join us, go with us to a secret island, drink this cup of this Kool-Aid. No, just listen to what we tell you. That's all we want you to do. We just want to tell everybody what the Lord said, and that's going to do its own work. Let me get more scriptures now. I just had to say all of that because, see, these are things that you don't want to have to say to Jake because we want you to get it. But obviously, obviously, common sense ain't so damn common. Jake's still in the comment board. Can you give me one scripture and show me Christianity is bad? Hands all wide. Brother, can you give me one scripture and tell me Christianity is bad? How about the whole Bible? How about that? These And these list of things I just told you. And I just only scratched the surface. There's way more other things than that. Way more. So-called altar call. You know a dumb thing that Christian. I just wave my hand. That ain't in the Bible. <laughs> Ah, just wave my <laughs> Where's that at? And what does it do? You're just making your arm tired is all you're doing. We've seen all the right hand of fellowship. Everybody come to the front to the altar call. Call on Jesus. Tell him you tell him now. Tell him you want him. Tell him he... <laughs> that's all false. It's a bunch of BS. And it, it oh. And I sat there all them years and I listened to it and I watched it. And I and me and my brother, we used to, we used to say, we used to see our relatives falling out, falling on the ground, saying they got the spirit. We like, well, damn, Lord must don't love us. We don't never feel why we don't why don't never happen to us. Why the spirit <laughs> see my grandma them doing it, falling all out. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Doing all that. And we just like, what are they doing? And as we got older, we began to realize. They're phonies. They're faking. And I know y'all seen it too. You went to church and seen all that madness. Completely ridiculous. It's a waste of time to ever go in there to give them your money. They tell you the law is done away with, but the only law that you got to pay tithes though. Who well, ain't that a law? Stupidity, man. The music, most of the people can't even sing. Now, every now and again, you do get, you get them choirs. Those choirs that are really good good because why we the israelites and we got great voices we can play good music and then jake started thinking that because you called on jesus and you made it uh, uh, uh 1100 on your sats you pray to jesus look you're gonna get blessings good as well as evil no matter which one false god you call them because that's the way the lord set things up right i'm trying to remember the scripture where you how i talked about that you know He's going to give even the Edomites get blessed. That's not that's not an original thing. It's not a thing based upon what God, particularly what God you're calling on, because we're going to the Lord said he's going to be a small sanctuary unto us in the places where we came in captivity. So we got us getting out of slavery, the hardcore bondage. That was a blessing, but we were still going off. Anyway, let's let's get more scriptures here. I'm so hot now. Damn. So many different stuff in the scripture with these people going off. The first lady. This is the first lady. This is my wife. She's a female pastor. That ain't in the Bible, man. Just stop. And people are fed up with it now. They're not even listening to that crap anymore. So let's get a few scriptures, a few more here. And I had this what the brother had uh put up, but I got I'll read another one. Because he he gave us the uh the Acts 7. Elder Kazak gave us Acts 7. I'm sorry, one of the brothers, I can't remember which brother gave us that. But this is now Acts 17 and 24. And let's get the Elder Scripture first. The Water Brothers. I, I couldn't think of it. Elder Kazak from GMS Jackson, Mississippi. How shall I coming back? Matthew 5, 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil 
and on the good and send this rain on the just and on the unjust wow that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send it rain on the just and on the unjust this is why you will see people sometimes get blessings that are wicked it's just a it's a natural thing that happens on the earth and yeah the most High did bless all humans he gave you rain he gave you sunlight he gave you a planet grass food you can eat things but it don't make you the chosen it doesn't make you the chosen and you're only going to understand the bible when the lord sent his men to teach it to you that's the only way you don't choose him another thing christianity told you lies about you can choose i chose the lord okay yeah i found the lord no you was lost he was never lost you don't choose him he chooses you bunch of lies christianity is, is almost 100 lies lies rabbits laying eggs all kind of stuff easter bunny then they try to now that we bring the truth out they'll try to distance himself from those things you can't distance yourself from that white jesus white angels the, the most high is white israelites white people yeah okay nobody's white Acts 17 <clears throat> i'm gonna start at 22 it says then paul stood in the midst of mars hill and said ye men of athens i perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious for as i passed by and beheld your devotions i found an altar with this with this inscription to the unknown god whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him declare i unto you listen it says god but it's the most high that made the world and all things therein seeing that he is lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands you got to go to church to see the lord go to the church brother don't go in the church any building where they say the spirit of the lord is in that building he was he is not there dwelleth not in temples made with hands neither is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything seeing he given life to all and breath and all things and has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face to dwell on all the face of the earth christians think when you read this he made everybody one see right there, all men come all men are brothers why that is true all nations are not the chosen and human beings all have one type of blood we don't have the same blood like a beast we have a different type of blood do we not that's all it means it doesn't mean that all of us are the chosen the chosen are the israelites this is why we have the spirit to break the Bible down and you do not and have made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face on all the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Now, Jake and Esau will both say, well, ain't we all God children. Technically. Technically, but we're not all his chosen. He has a chosen child. That chosen child was abraham then isaac then jacob that's the chosen lineage we're not all the most high children as it were you have a wicked well we are his creations put it that way salvation of the elect deuteronomy 32 and 8 when the most high divided the nations salaki when the most high divided to the nations their inheritance which is their land when he separated the sons of adam he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of israel why did he do that <laughs> this is why for the lord's portion is his people jacob is the lot of his inheritance oh you racist bastards oh you come he chose this one. he didn't choose that one that's what the bible said man if you got a problem with it, you got a problem with the lord not us come on baby we your brothers <laughs> it is what it is people ain't gonna they're not gonna get it now you may say why the lord got to see jacob go all the way back after everything we just told you you will say well, what's wrong with us going to church on sunday are you deaf are you hard of hearing did you get loved as a child did you take hooked on phonics did you have remedial math i mean what do you need to, what what more do we need to tell you good lord but that's how the most highest people are they're gullible and at the end of the day, when you have a person that keep on going, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? I, currently, and I plan on doing a lesson on this. There's a guy that's asking, can we tell him he was a former Jehovah's Witness, but now he know about the truth. But can we show him what's wrong with the New World Translation versus the Bible? Oh, Lord, man, really? 
What's the Most High's book? Did the Most High write the New World Translation? The answer is no. But you need a lesson that we got to go into it and, and, and break it down. Next, you'll be saying, what's wrong with the Talmud? Yep. I, I love the phrase. Tripping. <laughs> through. <laughs> nope. Through, man. But for edification's sake, you know, if the spirit allows, we'll, we'll, we'll try to, you know, we'll see what's going on with it. And that's something, it's actually a good question as far as I say it's, it's good for edification. You're supposed to know right away what's wrong. Even the Book of Mormon says that it's another testament of, you know, of the Savior. That's what it says, another testament. So it, it ain't the, the original one. It's another one. Well, anybody can come up with another book. Damn. You're supposed to be able to, yep, yep, let's read this one. This is Jim Escobar Dama, Jeremiah 422. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sodish children. They have none understanding as it goes on. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Now, this person, Maz Tricks, Shalom, brother, Pastor Dow, straight. What are you talking about, Pastor Dow, for? Are you that dumb? You don't know Pastor Dow is a false prophet. Number one, the man say Esau can be saved. He has no fringes on his on his garment. I think that dude think all nations can be saved. Pastor Dow is a false prophet. Okay, he's a false prophet. New breed, global true root. New breed, global true. Look, man, you, maybe you didn't know that. Pastor Dow is a false prophet. He's a false prophet. He's not a man of the Lord. Okay. That dude allowed E mice in his church. So lock him. Pardon me. Yeah, Pastor Dow's a false prophet. You could have let him stay because he ain't gonna come with nothing, but that's all right. Don't reinstate him. He's better off gone. Pastor Dow's a false prophet. That dude ain't on no level. He ain't got no camp. He's not a man of the Lord. And every Israelite out there, if you fancy yourself as a teacher, and you say you got the spirit of the Lord. Why then is that Holy Spirit not also tell you to go out there on the highways and hedges as one of the men of the Lord, the prophets? You can't say you, I got the Holy Spirit, but it didn't give you that part. Yes, it did. It would have given you that part because that's what the Lord, you ain't better than us. You ain't better than your Howard Shy. Now, I'm sorry, brother, you tying him out. You could have blocked him. I don't give a damn. Pastor Dow ain't on no level. He ain't making no noise. Just because a bunch of people follow the man and they watch him and they go there and give him money and do all that. He get the football players, lead the NFL and come. They like that cuddly shit. That's that family cuddly shit. Everybody's accepting shit. That's all. Pastor Dow is an insider, man. That's dude that's an insider. He got a, don't he got a compound of some shit in Tennessee? We have an AR-15s and weapons. While he may give you good information, he's not going to help you get saved. That dude is a false prophet. And, and we've done lessons on that guy before. And any brother, if you want to do new lessons on him, go ahead and light his ass up. If the spirit come on you to do it. Pastor Darby, that dude, same thing. Any Israelite that say you an Israelite Christian, you know you tripping. You through. You through, man. Yep. Now, I want to read you something since I just brought that up. I, I, I neglected to, to get this scripture. First in Antioch. Now, this video is a little different than what we normally do because usually we read scriptures a thousand miles a minute. We go scripture, scripture, scripture. I did a lot of talking in this video because you have to, you know, you have to explain this. This is Acts 11, 26. You had to explain some of these things that I've told and people will have experiences. And you knew you were sitting in that church and something was wrong. You knew something was wrong when you were sitting up in there. But you but, you know, like a lot of us, you just stayed there anyway. Cause you think you're getting next to God. I see. I was going to say I ain't want to listen to their song, but I was. I'm trying to worship God. Well, who is God? There's many gods. You got to have. You got to know His name. We teach you all of that. We teach you the name, who the Most High is, what what He is, what He's doing, what His purpose is. Yeah, this brother said that. Pastor Darby, Nawak Yahweh, which the Most High dropped his ass a few years ago. That dude died. He said, Pastor Darby, I forgot his name. He taught angels came down and had sex with women. Most of them teach that. Most of them teach that. You know, they, they teach shit like that. Angels ain't even like, they're not even, they don't even have, in the spiritual realm with the angels, they ain't they ain't walk around with, you know, I don't want to get make it graphic. They ain't walk around, you know, they ain't talking about, man, what you been doing, Michael? I don't know, Raphael. You went down to earth. Ooh. <laughs> 
Them, even my women in Earth, they fine, man. I can't wait. I'm going to I'm, I'm boy. I'm gonna get my angel freak on. No, man. No, angels don't have sex. They just don't. If you think in the Bible that angels had sex, that means your understanding is lacking. You just don't get it. That's all. You don't get it, man. Angels ain't never came out here and put the smack down on no woman, made no bodies for themselves. This is Acts eleven twenty six. It says, and when he had found him. He brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were first called Christians or were called Christians first in Antioch. They didn't call themselves that. They were called that. You see, let's read that again. It, I'm going to start at 25. It says, then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him into unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were first called Christians, or disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And look, don't get me wrong, it's a whole lot of history in there, and a lot of things happened, but the disciples didn't refer to themselves as Christians. The Savior never called himself a Christian, he never said he was a Christian, none of that. And people get it mixed up, they think that. The Christian, the Christian God, ain't no such thing as a Christian God. It's the God of the Hebrews, the God of the Hebrew Israelites, whose name is Yahweh, right? Particularly his people are the Israelites. Did he create all things and all beings? Sure he did, through his son and the angels, though. But he himself, he himself is not known by the nations. They don't know who, who our God truly is. That's why they all got their own God they worship. They got the God of the sun, the God of the... I just saw a video the other day where... Was it today? I don't know where it was. Somewhere in the world. These people burning fire, worshiping the God of the something. See? Egyptians got their own gods. Hamites got their own gods. Edomites got their own god. When they say God, they really, they, their God is really a representative of what they want. A white man who lets everybody do whatever they want to do. Even though he wrote a book, you can undo his writings, and his son came and undid all his laws. Look, man, so much is wrong with Christianity. I ain't gonna, try, I ain't gonna belabor the points. We put it out there. I'll read a few more scriptures, and we can shut it down, man. The disciples were called Christians, and they were being mocked. That's what they were calling them. Okay, today it's a religion, and when you rule the world like the so-called white man, you can't come and paint over every damn thing. And then go back and make movies and then make the movies seem like you was back there in them times. And this is how it really was. You know, why is a Hebrew Israelite man, Yahweh Shai, speaking with a British damn accent with a big ass nose to a bunch of other white folks? You know, all of that. It's, it's ridiculous. But when you got the power, you can do that. That's all. That's all. That's all it is. He made a religion. He hid shit. He chipped noses off statues. He painted over images. He moved people around the earth. He changed the names of places. He done all of this shit. He is the wicked of the whole earth. You can try to, you can try to make it a uh, uh, small by saying you guys are racist. You're anti-Semitic. It was what's wrong with the color. And it, look, you need to tell whatever you say to us. Say it to yourself first and to your fathers because they was the one that made whites only water fountains. Blacks only this. You was the one that made a, a, a name for people. Ain't nobody in the Bible known as white people. What nation do white people come from? There's nobody in the Bible known as black people. There were just nations of people. The white man will often say, well, I'm not from, I'm not Esau. Okay, well, what people do you come from? And can you prove it? You always want us to prove it. Can you prove it? Where was your people at? We can tell you where you came from. You came from the Caucasus Mountains, devil. Your name is Esau Edom. Edom, boy. You Esau. You the only nation that looked like that. The first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. <laughs> Esau, boy, that's who you are. You are our brother. Do you and you niggas that keep talking about black? Oh, it's black. I know melanin. Do you realize that the damn Africans, the so-called white man, is closer to us than the Africans are, and he ain't even got melanin. You do realize that they, they're our twin brother. They the evil. They the evil twin. Hamites are completely another nation. Esau is our twin brother. He come from the same damn, you know, from the same uh, uh, forefather, right? Going back to, um, let me get it right, Isaac and Rebecca. Ham came from a whole nother line. 
But you niggas keep talking about Africa, Africa, Africa. Ah, Baba, way, way, Baba, way. We ain't Africans. What are you talking about? You can you can go away denying. Look at this. Give us the laws, brothers. For the, all the LGBT people, give us the law. See, you know what? Never mind. Well, you can give us the law. I'm going to watch what I say because this video, I want this video to go out and I want these other Israelites, these new, scared, shaky, wobbly, deer legs, baby nut Israelites to understand. Stop looking back and want to go back to the Christian church. That shit is puke. It's puke. We despise Christians. We despise Christianity and everything they stand for because they're a bunch of goddamn liars, man. Ooh, you do the Lord name in vain? How? His name is Yahweh. I said, goddamn. What are you talking about? Taking the Lord's name in vain has nothing to do with you saying words. It doesn't. Goddamn is not a blasphemy. It is. This guy, Snow Homish, denying Ligbit people rights is another thing wrong with Christianity. Uh, Christianity on the whole, they sponsor it. You got a whole churches that they got them kind of people. That's, that's the preachers there. You got them kind of people. That's the preachers there. Just go away. L allow me to inform you that when our Savior comes, all of the lig bit people will be burned up and destroyed in Babylon the Great. That's here. Not a one of them going to be saved unless they repent. We had to repent. You got to repent. We had to stop smoking weed. We had to stop stealing. We had to stop selling dope. We had to stop doing what we was doing. We was committing sin. If you be with another man as a man, you commit the sin. You got to repent. You got to stop it. It's wicked. You being a woman, you're doing the same thing. You got to stop. You got to repent. You can't say, well, I feel like what I feel. I know what did the Lord make you. Do you have a winky? You're a guy. Do you have a set of a tree with two apples. You're a man. Do you have a, a set of melons up top? Right. And a, and a hole down below. You're a woman. That's what you got to be. Don't say it to us. Take it up with the Lord. That's all. <laughs> yeah, Bob White. Dial it down a little bit, brother. It's all right. Okay. Because he all right. He in the spirit. He said, all glory to you. How about you? How shy? You all right, Bob. We love you, Bob. But, you know, you got a little excited. And I, and I did, too. So, you know, it is what it is. Let's read this one. This is prayer is powerful. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Do you know that the Christian church don't even talk about the elect like that? There's a chosen of the Lord. There are human beings on the earth that the Lord personally selected to be his very, his favorite, 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 favorite people. And he's going to save them. That's it. And they only come from the Israelites. So if you were Edomite, you have no chance. I'm going to say it again. If you're Edomite, you have no chance. You can keep getting mad at us. Send YouTube a letter. Okay. Not going to change anything. Let's give them a law. This is for Snow Homish. Nawak Yahweh. This is from the Almighty right here, Snow Homish. Leviticus 18 and 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as thou, as with a womankind. It is abomination. Let me read it again. I messed it up. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. What's abomination? Land with a man with a man. A woman with a woman. It's abomination. That's from the Old Testament, you bastard. God changed. Jesus came on the scene. He said, okay, give it to us from there, brothers. First Corinthians 6 and 9 through 10. Somebody please. We're going to read it to him from the New Testament like it matters. It's one book. <laughs> we ain't going to take them no, that much time with these people. They're primitive and low. You beneath us. Not because of we better than you in the flesh, but spiritually we better than you. We are. We are. And even in the flesh, as Israelites, we better than you. But in this life, we've been the service and the slaves here. So you got to have a superiority, an air of superiority because you're a white and you come from a, a, a fluid family and you talk a certain way. So what? Not going to get you saved by the Lord. You're going to still go into slavery, boy. And you're going to be on somebody plantation picking tea leaves and lemons and all kind of stuff milking cows you're gonna do it big you know we love to eat you're gonna be you're gonna always have a job so that's a good thing about it but after a thousand years gotta go prayer is powerful first corinthians six and nine know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the most high be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate right nor abusers of themselves with mankind 
yeah, how it reigns forever. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the most high. And for all intents and purposes, those lick bit people, they don't have any rights. They don't have any rights. They wouldn't even be alive under Hebrew law. They wouldn't even live. As soon as it was found out that anybody was doing that, what would happen? They would be put to death. That's thus says the almighty. Nobody can change that. So keep getting mad at us. We don't care. Let's get ready to go to close it out. Let's read this guy's um question again. Here it is again. And I also read you an exchange I had with a Christian. He says, hey, can someone give me a verse where it says that Christianity is bad or whatever? I'm really lost about this. Really? Really? I believe in Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and Rakakwa Dash. I've been born an Eastern Orthodox. It's just crazy to me that I've been lied to this whole time. You've been lied to, but you was also put under the spell of deep sleep by the Lord. And your heritage was taken from you. You was under the curses. It ain't just but some lie that got passed around. All, all these things was happening. The Lord had to be that way. That's all. Don't take it too hard. We was all under the spirit of deep sleep at one point. That's why we say wake up. You have to wake up. But the Lord has to wake you up. Right? His spirit is doing the gathering. That's all. Let's read this. Um. Snow Homer just got an excuse. We just read it to you in the New Testament, man. You're going to make excuses. The original translation said, man should not lie with boy. <laughs> but the 1900 American Bible translated boy to man. Oh, well, that changes it. You can't sleep with a boy. Okay. Well, you can sleep with a man, but you can't. Shut up, man. It's just stupid. When you go to Romans 1, it says women. Hold on. You got a hard head here. But that's okay. This is what we do. We bring forth edification. Snow homish. <laughs> Snow homish need to go homish. That's where you need to go, man. And anyway, if you got a beef, take it up with the Lord. Don't come here with us. We ain't the one. We're not the ones you need to convince. You need to convince the Almighty. We just we just messengers. That's all. This is Romans one. Let's see. Let's see what kind of fancy words you got to get you out of this one. Romans one and verse. I'm going to jump here at verse 24. It says, Wherefore the Most High also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, so like you, um, yeah, I got it. I'm right. For this cause, the Most High gave them up into vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. This is talking about women and women. And also, the men, not the boys, the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. What does it mean now, Snow Homish? It means that men can't be together either, cuz. Why you why you acting like that? We're trying to reason with you here. We ain't even insulted that you showed up. Because maybe you just don't know better. But now you have no excuse. Now you have no cloak for your sins. We told you. Let's read it from the NLT. Romans 1 and 24 from the NLT. It says, So the most high abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about the Most High for a lie. They worshipped and served the things of the Most High, created instead of the Creator Himself, who was who was worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why the Most High abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burn with lust for each other men did shameful things with other men and as a result of this sin they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved whoo come on now like them, like them old christian preachers don't shout me down when i'm preaching good now you got blazed cuz admit it just go just go on somewhere now 
and this and shall we go back to the example of Sodom and Gomorrah? There wasn't nobody around in the 1900s back in Sodom and Gomorrah then. It changed boy to man and it really meant this. The most high burned up five cities full of people doing all that. You got cooked, grilled you up quick. Bye. Let's keep it moving. You made a big mistake coming here. <laughs> Woo. Well, I tell you, you people gonna learn. You're gonna learn. You ain't got nothing for the Hebrew Israelites. You have nothing for us. We walk all over you, man, with this word. So people are gonna say, well, What's wrong with going to church? Well, the most high talk because people may say, Well, God didn't say nothing about churches in the Bible. Yes, he did. Let's read it. A rebellious people. Isaiah 65, verse 1. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. What does that mean? Is this talking about the Christians? It ain't talking about them. It's talking about the Israelites because when we were scattered, we wasn't called by the Lord's name. But guess what? In prophecy, it's stated, is it Hosea 1 and 10? In prophecy, it is stated. Let me read it to you. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. And you can't put that on no other people. You can't say it's a place where the Jews, these, these people you talking about, this Jews is really not, but do lie. You can't say there's a place where they wasn't called that. They always been called that since we know them because they were assuming an identity that didn't belong to them. But these other people that were not called by the Lord's name, now they're being told, you an Israelite. You look at this sign, brother. You Israelite. You from Judah. You I'm from Judah? I'm a Jew? Yeah, brother. Oh, shit, I'm a Jew. I got my friend. Yeah. Now these niggas want to make rap songs and rap. We can't even control these damn niggas now. They're going crazy. But that's because of their zeal. And they happen to be Israelites, but even though they're going off, but we were sent to correct them. And those that receive the correction, they'll be all right. Those that don't, they're going to be destroyed. And then they'll be all right. So back in Isaiah 65 and 1, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. None of us was really seeking the Lord in spirit and truth. I said, behold me, behold me into a nation that was not called by my name because we were called everything else. I have spread out my hands into all Salakia. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. And this is what Christianity taught you how to go after your own thoughts, what you felt. And you're still doing it now. You're bucking up against the truth, even though it's coming, because you filled up with that Christianity madness. A people that provoked me to anger continually to my face. Listen, that sacrifices in gardens and burn incense upon altars of brick. Allegorically speaking, when you go to a church, because because modern churches were, were crafted after ancient grove and garden worship. Because Israelites, different people would go out in the gardens, they worship deities of the, you know, different gods. And they pattern these churches, the archways, the different little, you know, architecture, they pattern it after grove worship. That's what it's speaking of. But today, for us, it's these churches. And it goes further. And it what? Burneth incense upon altars of brick. Burning incense is a spiritual practice of worship, right? And even though you may not burn incense, you're going into a building made out of brick to worship a false god. Pattern after grove worship and garden worship. Listen to this. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Wait a minute. What does it mean they lodge among the monuments and the graves? I don't know how it is up north. And it probably is up north, but down south. These little churches, they have oftentimes they have a graveyard behind the church on the side of the church. They barely got graves out there. They tell you all. Oh, all kind of lies in Christianity. They told us we was growing up. If you step on somebody's grave, what do they say? Oh, uh, you're going to get sick. <laughs> if you step on a grave, you're going to get sick. Right. You got a graveyard. You have buried a person. You step on a grave. You're going to get sick. The Christian church told us that. When you were a kid, you growing up from from the time you grow up till you get 12, all your sins go on your mama. Your mama got her regular sins and she got all your damn kid sins. 
stacked on top of her <laughs> till you get 12. That's a lie. That ain't in the Bible anywhere. Christian church told us that. Two women, uh, a man and a woman getting together, having sex is fornication. That's a lie. That's not true. It's not true. The Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. As long as a woman don't have a, a husband and a man find a woman and he get with her, it's not fornication. It's not even what it's talking about. Shacking up is not a man and a woman living together is a sin. It's called shacking up. Read it to us. Read it to us. That's all you got to do. Prove it. A man and a woman living together is a sin. <laughs> Why is it a sin? They can't pay their bills, brother. Why not? They both work. It's dumb. It's dumb. It's ridiculous. Let's keep going. So those those monuments and them graves, they be at the church. Oftentimes, sometimes they like as time grows on, after they bury so many people at the church, then they have to get another ground to bury because all that damn ground full of full of dead bodies. So they have to, like our church did growing up, it filled up. They had it beside the church, behind the church, on the other side of the church, all these, all these graves. Then they had to start burying people at a different place. They could no longer do it. It was filled up. And what else? Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things is in their vessels. If they cook any food at the church and have a pro when they have a program afterwards, you know they got pork back there. Sometimes they have seafood salad with shrimp and crab and all kind of stuff in it. That if, if you from Louisiana or any place like that, they'll have that. What is that? A crawdad bisque or gumbo with all the different shit in it. They're going off for doing that. And you know the reason why? Let's go there. Uh, conspiracy of her prophets. It, the Bible goes in detail about this stuff. This is Ezekiel 22. Listen to this. And 25. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. Now, what's the conspiracy? You have conspired. Men that are Israelites, like the so-called Negro, the black church, the Negro, the Latino church, Native American church. In order for you to be a preacher of an organization, you have to be what? They want you to be form. We well, don't have to be, but they want you to be formally trained in Esau's seminary schools. And they can ordain you to become a minister. Wait a minute. The prophets of the Lord didn't have to go to no school and get ordained. They just were born. The Lord said, you, you my man, get out there, do this, do that. You didn't have to go to a church and be taught that. Esau teaches you people a curriculum. This is also what's wrong with Christianity. Men of the Lord didn't have to be trained by some, some guy who's not a man of the Lord and using a certain, you know, a certain curriculum. And they implement all the same lies that we've been telling you about all this whole time. We've been on this lesson, what, an hour and 23 minutes now? We've been telling you about these lies. And then they also made Sonic, they Masonic, they all kind of stuff. In order for them to remain tax free, they're under the 501 C3 stat statute. In order to remain as such, they have to teach what the church tells them to teach. That's all. All right, this one sister, you got to calm down now because you're doing too much. You see, the other sisters back there chilling. So just, you know, do what they're doing. Right? That's all kind of stuff. They want, yeah, like the brother said, had to pay all that unnecessary money to get their degree in religious studies. That ain't in the Bible. The Bible, the, the most I never told men to do that. That ain't in the scriptures anywhere. Wearing a tie, a suit and tie, right? Oh, none of that's in the, in the Bible. Matter of fact, when you wear a tie, that's in the, that's a uh, uh, it's like giving respect to the false false god Baal. It's Baal worship when you wear a damn tie. It's Masonic, man. All these things, it's, it's hours and hours and on and on and on, different things that these people got you going off on. Here you were defending the shit. Gospel music is the same. It's it's trash, man. Because all of it, even if the songs sound beautiful, even if they make you cry, they make you feel something. That's just emotion. That ain't the spirit of the Lord. You might you maybe you just like music and they sound good. Like hip hop. The shit sound good sometimes, but it's all the illicit worship of the false God Jesus. How then can it be used for anything? Not getting you closer to the most high. Sure, he gave you a voice, he gave you talent. Okay, cool. You can play an instrument. Fine. But you yielded up your members to the worship of a false god. It's just like if you burn incense. Burning incense is permitted. 
But if you burn it to the wrong God, now you're going off. Burning incense in itself is not wicked. But if you do it to the wrong, like with sage, it's not wicked. But if you say you're going to burn sage to Baal, now you're going off. You're going to burn Jesus, uh, burn sage or incense to white Jesus. Now you're going off. I'm going to burn incense to my ancestors. You're going off. That's all. It's easy stuff. Ezekiel 22 and 25 again. There was a conspiracy of our prophets in the midst. They conspired with the so-called white man Esau with his seminary and his 501c3 and all his different rules so they could be under his church system. Like a roaring lion ravening to prey, they have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. What else did they do? Her priests have violated my law. And have profaned my holy things. What did they do? They put no difference between the holy and profane. Let's stop right there. What's the holy? The holy are the Israelites. Can we get it, brothers? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I, you know what? I won't even wait. I, I'll just bring it up. Let's just show you that real quick. The holy. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. This is what it says. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above, not equal to, not just like, not on the side of. No, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. These are the only holy people in the Bible. These are the only holy people on the whole earth. That's it. Just them. Nobody else. Why did the church never tell you that? Any Christian church telling you that? Who are the profane people? Let's go to it. Hebrews 12, 16. What does it say? It says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Profane means outside of the temple, outside of the worship of the Lord, outside of the family of the Lord. He's profane. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And he passed that along to all his people. The Edomites are profane. The Israelites are holy. But this says they put no difference between the holy and profane. What's one of the main things that a black preacher would tell you? If you tell him the so-called white man is he's our, man, he's our brother in Christ. Come on, brother. We the same as us. They ain't no different than us. You put no difference between the holy and profane. You said we all one people and we're not. We're holy. They profane, holy, profane, profane, holy. With the Lord, not with the Lord. That's just all it is to it. You can't get out of it. But but what did they do? They, they had a conspiracy to tell everybody we all the same. What else? Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. What's that mean, brother? They tell you that you can eat whatever you want now. Everything is clean. Jesus made all foods clean. He declared, Vocab Malone said that shit. The Savior declared all foods clean. And that's just not true. Everything ain't clean. Squid ink, rattlesnakes, frogs, escargot, right? All kind of nasty shrimp, crab, lobster, uh, pig feet, pork chops, chitlins. All oh, that's unclean. Squirrel meat, rabbit meat. Right, all unclean scallops, calamari, octopus, eel, alligator meat, all of it, raccoons. Uh, what's the other one? Raccoons and possums, all unclean, turtle meat. This is a bunch of niggas, uh, not niggas, bunch of people, and they niggas too, just died from eating sea turtle meat, <laughs> dogs, cats, all unclean, not to be consumed, not to be consumed. But these preachers in these churches tell you, you can eat whatever you want. Eat whatever you want. They have so that's all there. They put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. How do they hide the eyes from the Sabbaths of the Lord? When you was growing up, you never knew what a Sabbath was, how to chart the Sabbath, none of that. You knew that Sunday was the Lord's day. Saturday, if you was a Jehovah's Witness. Right or um seven day at Venice, and maybe even a uh you was Jewish, you might have worshiped on Saturday. 
That's all. They so many things they've done. They've been going off, off, off. Yep, the water brother. This is GMS spiritual art, Leviticus 11 and 9. And that's why it says, the Lord said, you can do this, you can't do this. But that's for the Israelites, though. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all they that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, and of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination. That's all. And it goes on to that way unto you. There should be an abomination unto you. And it went on that way with every in every place in the skies of the fowls that creepeth on land that's in the waters. The Lord did that. And you're supposed to keep that perpetually as statues forever. But the Christian church don't tell you that. And you hear the Sabbath. You said that we didn't even know nothing about a Sabbath, nothing about a new moon. None of that. We didn't know about that growing up. But now we know about it. Let's go back real quick and we get ready to shut it down. I've been going long enough. The point is made. Let's go back to Isaiah, finish it off over there. Isaiah 65. And there's another scripture where the Lord called these churches harlot houses. Harlot houses. Why? Because it's where you commit spiritual whoredom against the Lord. So we read this, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. These are smoking the Lord's nose. And don't people that go to church, ain't they stuck up? Don't they think they're better than you? Than women with them big ass hats doing all kind of wickedness. First one to the church, last one to leave, singing the loudest, sounding off key, looking terrible. Church breath. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence. But we'll recompense, even recompense unto their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, said the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore, will I measure their former work unto their bosom. And this is representative of what? False God worship. Let's jump down a few verses here. Um, verse 11 says, but ye are they that forsake the Lord that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. The Lord says he's going to number all those that won't come out from the false religious systems, Worship the true and living God. He's going to number them to the sword, man. He goes on. He says, therefore, thus said the Lord power. Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen, for the Lord power shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. There you go. It's right there. And I mean, we could go on this, man. I mean, there's many other scriptures where the Lord talk about the preachers. He talked about Jezebel, that woman who calls herself a prophetess. On and on and on and on. It's a big topic. And I and I knew about this early in the week. But, you know, I, I was determined to do a lesson on it, but I didn't know when. And I really didn't want to go into it today because I knew it was going to be time consuming. But now it, it is what it is. We've done it. Going back to this person's comment. So hopefully both texts, because I've been seeing him on the comment board asking different questions. I think he asked uh, he asked myself and the elder brother, um, GMS Awakening, Amawan, Amawan Gabar, he asked him and me. Why do we use the KJV? No, I'm sorry. He asked another brother, Priest Shaman from GMS Overdrive. He asked him, and on my comment board, why do we use the King James Version? You know. And, you know, the brother brother answered the question. I wasn't even going to answer it, but the King James Version is the closest thing to the original. That's why we use it. But see, these little, you know, can someone give me a verse where it says that Christianity is bad or whatever? I'm really lost about this. I believe in Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and Rakakwa Dash. 
I've been born an Eastern Orthodox. It's just crazy to me that I've been lied to this whole time. All right. And I, you know, basically said, look, man. Oh, let's read this exchange with this Christian. Because it was similar. But he he's completely through. So check this out. And I'll just read, you know, our comments. So this person, William Miller, completely clueless. He says, and this is from the video, um, the response to how Christians will be on the day of the rapture. So he says, you say Christianity is false and then proceed to read from the Bible. I don't get that. And let me just say this. No, you don't get it because ain't no Christians wrote the Bible. What are you talking about? See, this is the this is the mental. He's he through. Soon as you see the Bible, oh, oh, Christians. The Israelites was the ones that wrote the Bible. The Heavenly Father through the through the, the hands of Israelite men wrote the Bible. These modern day people who tried to hijack the word of the Lord. Yeah, the most high put the spirit on them to make sure they put the Bibles in these neat, you know, these neat book form and did everything they did. Gave us the blue letter, you know, all that. But all this technology is really just the Lord did it all. He just used them to do it because they were the ones in authority and in power. But it's our book. That's all. That's all it is. But he doesn't get that. Going on, he says. You say Christianity is false and they proceed to read from the Bible. I don't get that. And I said, did any Christians write the Bible or was it the Israelites? You must be on medication. Normally after this, I would just block the guy, but I was interested in what he was going to say. So I let it go on for, you know, a few back and forth. I wanted to see what he would say. He says, Paul was both a Christian and a Jew. No, he wasn't. Paul was an Israelite, which he was a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin, but he was also a Roman citizen. He wasn't no Christian. Christian is a religion. He was a Mashiachim. He was a follower of the, of the anointed, but it wasn't being called Christians. Let's, let, me, let me prove what I said right quick. <clears throat> Bear with me here. This brother said something. Hold on here. Botex has been trying to thwater me on my comment board. I did not respond to him. Yeah, he, he, he's a new person. I mean, time will tell. You know, time will tell about that guy. We'll see. Uh, first is get Hebrews 11. I'm sorry, not Hebrews 11. Romans 11. <clears throat> so this is Romans 11. It says, I say then, hath the Most High cast away his people? Yahweh forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Right? So Paul was an Israelite by nationality from the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Benjamite, right? Which it means he was a Jew. Because Judah, Levi, and Benjamin were the southern kingdom of Judah, which made them Jews. He was a citizen of Rome. <clears throat> this is Acts 22, 25. And as they're bounding with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, take heed without doest, for this man is a Roman. He was a Roman by citizenship, but not by blood. He was no Edomite. Then the chief captain came and said unto him tell me art thou a roman he said yeah verse 29 then straightway they departed from him which should have examined him and the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a roman and because he had bound him acts 23 27 this man was taken of the jews and should have been killed of them then came i with an army and rescued him having understood that he was a roman by nationality, but by blood, what was he? He was an Israelite, right? So the writings of Paul were written by an Israelite, and all the writings of the Bible were written by other Israelites. That's all. Other men of, of, of the Lord that were Israelites. Now he goes on, he says, he wrote a very large portion of the New Testament, but all scripture is the inspired work of God, not man. Who said it was? Otherwise. Man is simply not capable of declaring the end from the beginning. As See, this is when Edomites try to show you their knowledge. 
can a brother give me the scripture Isaiah 8 and 20 though? That's the whole thing. But notice he ain't use no scriptures though. The Edomites want you, they want to convince you with their whiteness, right? They want to convince you with their whiteness and their knowledge that they're right. You ain't never gonna be right when not using those scriptures. He goes on, we see it literally unfolding before our eyes today. Without his spirit in your heart, his word, Bible, is foolishness to you. You can find fault in it all day long, but you are pro proving nothing except your own ignorance of what it is saying. You say, I need medication. I say, you need God. Pride is not going to get you there. But he didn't answer the question. <clears throat> he tried to, but he ain't, he ain't got it. See, he tried to he tried to circumly cute and talk around it, but I wasn't going to let him get off the hook. Jim has spiritual art, Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Right. He ain't bringing them out of the scriptures. He just, he going to keep on in that manner. I came back, I said, Acts eleven twenty six, 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And I told him Christians was a mocking term made up by the Romans. The Israelites never called themselves that. Today, people that call themselves that are pagans following a pagan religion. This is why your religion today is frowned upon. And never at any time did you see the Savior nor any prophet refer to themselves as such. We are just the Israelites. Second Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now go away, Esau. He comes back. You don't even know what paganism is. Yes, I do. You're one. If you did, you would not be calling believers in Jesus that. <laughs> See, now you want to. I compel you by the spirit of Christ. Using that label to simply demonize someone or belief again demonstrates your ignorance. No, it doesn't. And I didn't use it to demonize anybody. I just answered your question. He says the Romans called themselves Christians. I'm sorry. The Romans called them Christians because they followed Jesus. He doesn't understand that. Do you even know who crucified Jesus or why? Or do you even care to know? Jesus is the only ticket to God's mercy and forgiveness. That is the gospel. Why did you if you if that's the gospel, why you didn't put no scriptures up yet? Jesus was either a complete lunatic or he was and is who he said he was. God in the flesh is a sacrifice for the atonement of our sins. Dismiss this truth at your own peril. I came back. Let me see if I can get to the other comment. Um, this is it right here. Because it continued on for several, you know, minutes. I said, you are raising other arguments to hide your ignorance of the Bible. His name was not Jesus, as the letter J wasn't even around until the 1500s. Furthermore, followers of the Messiah would have been called at more accurately. Furthermore, followers of the Messiah would have been more accurately called Mashiachim, which I spelled it wrong. I left the H out. Mashiachim. Christmas was a pagan ritual introduced to believers as part of the current religion of Christianity. Birthday celebrations, Easter and Ash Wednesday, as well as Lent, are all pagan rituals and holidays which Christianity sponsors. And that's all true. Again, go away, Esau. Jeremiah 10, verse 1, hear you the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers that it move not. And I didn't even let him come back. I just blocked him after that because I, you know, tired of talking about it. Any Christian out there on the planet, you know, Christian is uh, Christmas is complete bullshit. Your religion sponsors it. If you say you are a Christian or you follow Christianity, we can show you so many errors in your religion. And it's only loosely based upon the Bible, not based upon the Bible at all. From your speaking in tongues to your holidays to the clothes you wear to all we've been through it all to your communion to your faith being dipped in the water like that's doing something and don't get me wrong people were baptized in the scripture they were dipped in water but it was only symbolic it didn't wash away no sins 
from your from you saying the law being done away with or the gospel is only uh, for everybody on and on and on and on the people in the holy land the real people lord none of that is true america's not in the bible there's a hell on the ground burning you can't even explain that right we ask you one question is anybody here right now you start stuttering oh, uh, uh, uh. we'll say well how can hell be thrown into itself you can't answer that nothing you don't know who satan who re he really is what he really does what his real function is none of that you don't know nothing you won't even explain about the chariots of the lord the flying vessels what do the angels look like you will lie about all of that what happens when you die you don't have any of it right <laughs> and you're through man so that's it brothers and sisters i can just keep on talking about it you know every now and again we have to beat up on the christians but this has been <clears throat> hebrew israelites what's wrong with christianity and after this if you still asking that question the Lord ain't dealing with you at all, okay? I'm just going to say it. And it's not being presumptuous. You have to understand Christianity is a used rubber. Let's just say it. it's, a, it's a used rubber, man. Christianity is a fake-ass religion. That's all. And it's through. And if you follow, you through to white Jesus, white angels, through. So, Lord, when it was edifying, you got something out of it. And that you understand a little better those that didn't understand. And that's it. All right. We'll see you again soon with another lesson, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and by uh and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And that should be Yahweh Bash Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakwadash. Sometimes I don't always say it, but you know what it is. We'll see you soon, Lord willing. All right, Shalom.